Hi there, this is Chris, and I know that the screencast for Monday's lecture didn't uh, work because the audio was broken, uh, but uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over what I think is probably the most important part of the, uh, the lecture, which is this reverse engineering going from assembly language to C. Now, this is super duper important because you're going to have to be able to do this on your binary bomb assignment, which is coming up next week, and you're also going to have to do this for the uh, final exam. And you will get lots of practice during, during binary bomb uh, doing this, but you should uh, understand, I just wanted to show you um, my kind of thoughts on how I might approach something like this. So basically what's happening here, um, and I should say that this is kind of a little, a little bit of a puzzle or a, uh, a game in some sense, much like uh, Carol is a puzzle for CS106A students. Right? What's happening is we're basically taking this assembly language and mapping it back onto some C code that it came from. Okay? And often we will give you uh, some scaffolding here to, uh, to kind of get you going um, so you don't have to kind of make it up out of, uh, out of nowhere. But um, you, should be able to, uh, you should be able to do this without too, too much trouble. Okay? All right, let's just dig right in. If we have, let's take a look at this function long test. It's going to return along and the uh, it's going to have three parameters, long x, long y, and long z. And if you look on your one page sheet of instruction of assembly language, you're going to see that the first argument for a function is put in RDI. And guess what? x is our first value here. Okay, first parameter. The second argument is put into RSI, and that's y. And the third argument is put into RDX. This is a standard through all function calls. Okay, so if you have a function with three parameters, the first one's going to go in RDI, second one's going to go in RSI, third one's going to go into RDX. Okay, all right, so that's the, the, where we start. So if we ever see RDI in the rest of this assembly, it's going to mean X, etc. for RSI and RDX. Okay, all right, let's jump in. I should also mention that if you haven't read through the slides and tried to understand the slides, some of the things we do in here are not going to make sense. So you better go back and look at the slides and try to understand that before you uh, watch the rest of this video. Let's look at the this first instruction here, LEAQ. Okay, remember LEAQ was used as the address of uh, instruction? Basically what it does, it says, okay, we've got all these memory uh, addressing forms, and it's going to take whatever this equals, and it's going to put that into the destination. That's what LEAQ does. Much different than move, which actually dereferences these things and says, okay, go to the location RDI plus RSI and do something with the value there, get the value or whatever. In this case, it just takes the values in here. What's most interesting about this is that RDI and RSI, in this case, don't have to be addresses at all. The LEAQ instruction just takes those and performs that linear equation on it and gives the puts the result in your destination. So in this case, let's look at what we have here. RDI is X. RSI is Y. And we're gonna the the with the parentheses and the comment here, this basically means X plus Y. So we're gonna take X plus Y and we're gonna put it into RAX, okay, some other variable. So now we kind of know what's going on. Let's look at our C instructions or our C code over here. We've got a variable called val that we are putting something into and it's a it's a long variable or it's a long integer and we're going to put something into it. Well, the first instruction in our function says put x plus y into some that into rax. Well, that means that rax is our val variable. And so what this is going to be is x plus y. Great, so far so good, we've done this instruction. Let's go on to the second instruction here. Now what's happening? We're taking RDX and adding it to RAX and putting the result in RAX. Hmm. Well, this is where the puzzle part comes in. We already know that RAX is our val, because that's what we've, we've done over here, and it's adding RDX, which is Z, plus our val, and then storing the value back in val. So what's happening over here, there's only one line that's setting this val. Well, guess what? We're also adding z to it. 
In other words, this one statement here was these two instructions over here. Okay, many times one C in statement will produce multiple assembly language instructions. Okay, all right, let's go on to the next line. Aha, CMPQ, compare. We are comparing negative 3 to RDI, which we said was X. Okay, and remember what this does. This subtracts negative 3 from RDI, so it's going to be RDI minus negative 3, and then it sets some condition codes, okay? And those condition codes are the zero flag, right? So the zero flag or, or the uh, sign flag if it's negative, okay? It's going to set those flags, and those flags will be set, and the next instruction here jumps based on those flags. In other words, this instruction says, well, what are the flags right now? They were just set by the previous instruction. What are those flags? We're going to jump based on those flags. Here's how you read this. This is jump if greater than or equal. It's a nice little mnemonic there. Jump if greater than or equal RDI negative 3. So in other words, it says jump if RDI is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, that's how you read this. Jump if greater than or equal. Jump if RDI is greater than or equal to negative 3. Let's look where it's jumping. It's jumping to this label, L2. That's way down here, okay? So if RDI, if X is greater than or equal to negative 3, we're going to jump all the way down here, okay? Now, let's go look at our C code. We have an if statement here, okay? We have an if statement here that says if something, go to the next line, else, which is way down here, if something else. Well, guess what? This jump says, jump if x is greater than or equal to negative 3 all the way down here. In other words, if this is not true, we are going to jump all the way down to here, right? Because that's what the if statement means. This means if it's true, go on to this next line, right? And so in this case, it says jump if greater than or equal to, jump if x is greater than or equal to negative 3 all the way down here, meaning that this has to be if x is less than negative 3. Because if it was greater than or equal to negative 3, it would do the else statement down here. That's part of the puzzle that you have to figure out. Okay? All right, so we know that that's <clears throat> the case here. Let's go on to the next line, which would be this other if statement here. <clears throat> Great, we're doing another compare. We are now comparing RDX and RSI. Now you've got the same sort of idea here. Jump if RSI is greater than or equal to RDX. Well, RSI is Y and RDX is Z. So we are jumping where? We're jumping to L3. We're jumping way down here. The next line is if this is not true, right? So we are jumping if RSI is greater than or equal to Z, we are going to the else part. Again, that means if y is less than z, we are going to do the next line, okay? And that's this line here. All right, so what happens in this line? Well, now we've got some moves going on. So we are moving rdi into rax. All right, rdi is x and rax is val. So we are moving rdi into val, okay? Like this, x. And let's see if something else is happening. Now we are saying multiply RSI, which is Y, times RAX, which is val, and store the value back in RAX. So whatever RAX is, and by the way, we just made it X, we're going to multiply that by Y and store the value back in val. Guess what? That means this is X times Y. Okay? That's how you read that. Okay, and then there's a return in here, by the way, which basically just is the return because, it, in, in other words, this, is hap this just happened. Well, this is the L, so it doesn't do this, and it doesn't do this, and it doesn't do this, and it returns. So we've got just a return in there. Okay, there's no other jump to the return. We just return straight from there. That's the way the compiler did that. Okay, so if, we, if X was, or if Y was greater than or equal to Z, we jump down to L3, that's here, and now we are here in the code. Okay. Well, let's see what's happening. Oh, another move. Move RSI into RAX. Okay, RSI was Y, 
and we ran into RAX. Okay, that's val. So this is going to be val equals y. And then we're multiplying it by our dx, which is z, and putting that value back into rx. We're multiplying rx by d. So val times, remember this is val, val times z back into rax. So this is going to be y times z. Okay, and then same thing, return, because it doesn't do any of the else part in this case. All right, now we're down to L2, which is our original else from the first uh, jump up here, from the first if statement up here. Okay, now we're doing another comparison. Oh, notice we've got an if here. Comparisons are generally ifs. Comparing 2 to RDI, and now we are jumping if RDI, which is x, if x is less than or equal to 2, we are jumping down to the return. In other words, if this is not true, we're doing going down here. Okay, so else if x is less than or equal to 2, we are going to go jump away. So the next line has got to be if x is greater than 2, we are going to jump down to, or we're going to go to the next line. Okay, and on the next line, oh look, it's the same thing as before. We've got our same idea as before. We're moving x into val, moving x into val, okay, and then we are multiplying by z and putting the result into val as well, x times z. That is how you go from assembly code into C code, okay? And uh, go through this example lots of times if you need to, ask questions about it, and um, hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. But like I said, it's a little bit of a puzzle, and hopefully it is um, not too bad to understand once you uh, do it a few times. Thanks.